<laughs> okay, let's get rolling. Hey everybody, it's Nate from Adventure in a Backpack. So we wanted on this vlog, we wanted to kind of show some of the behind the scenes, the real life stuff of what we actually have to do on the days we're not out in nature. Uh, so today we are replacing an air filter in our Fiat, in our tow car. Uh, so kind of something I'm <laughs> kind of silly to think about. I'm kind of excited to pull this out because uh, before the, it has gone to Alaska before uh, the last air filter change, and obviously you can tell by the engine it's pretty gross. And so we're gonna see what that air filter looks like. And you guys haven't, uh, if you're new to the vlog, these are our pups. This is Pyrus. Hi, Pyrus. Pyrus say hi. Say hi to me. It's me. Hi, Pyrus. And the other one's over Sparta. Here. Sparta. There's Sparta. Oh, hey. You're getting too close. Okay, so I kind of scoped it out a little bit earlier. It seems pretty straightforward how we're going to do this. Uh, the first thing that you need is beer. Today's oil change is brought to you by Jeff Stout, Sweet Potato Sweet Cream Stout from Lazy Magnolia, Mississippi's Brewery. That was good, right? That's the most important part, clearly. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Next. Oh, air filter. You need an air filter. Uh, if anybody's stumbling upon this page, uh, actually looking how to change an air filter on this. Uh, my, my mechanics license is, uh, is through YouTube, and so that's where my license is from. So, so this beer is very foamy. I have a problem with it overflowing. Very odd. Anyway. Okay. So it seems pretty straightforward. Uh, I kind of scoped it out earlier to make sure I had all my right tools. It seems like it's just an eight millimeter socket on a quarter inch drive ratchet. Oh, it tastes good, Pyrus? What was that, a dead bug? So how about road conditions on uh, that this thing has gone through? <laughs> road conditions, yeah, so this, um, Fiat here has been dragged down the Alcan and I don't know if any of you have ever been down the Alcan but um, that highway is the Alaska Canada Highway and uh, pretty much goes from Alberta Canada through BC, uh, British Columbia, Yukon Territory and up all the way to Alaska. Um, and the road conditions are hmm, interesting. Um, a lot of it, so the highway itself is pretty much always under construction because, oh, Pyrus, what are you doing? Stop that. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the road, the highway is pretty much always under construction um, because every winter when it freezes up in Canada, um, the highway, the, the pavement buckles, it frost heaves. So... You're either driving on the sections of the Alcan, either have um, brand new pavement that has just been put down, or it's gravel that's being currently worked on, or it's um, broken pavement that has not been worked on just yet. There's a few nice so, sections. Yeah, like <laughs> I said, there are a few sections that have already been fixed or were fixed the prior year or whatever. Um, and that haven't quite gotten messed up just yet again, but for, for the most part, the majority of the Alaska Canada Highway is pretty rough. Um, so we drove the RV down it. We didn't really drive the Fiat on it hardly at all, but it was being towed behind the RV. Um, but yeah, those gravel sections were rough. The gravel sections, were the parts where um, we had to replace both windshields, both the windshield on the Fiat and the RV after going to Canada. Um, because of those gravel sections, we had um, the, the 
uh, windshield in the RV, we had to replace that because of a semi that drove past us going the opposite direction and threw a rock from, from the road, uh, hit us. I mean, he was probably going 40 or 50 miles an hour. That, hit, that rock hit us and um, smashed the windshield. Um, then the windshield on the car, on the other hand, that was basically because of um, the rocks flying up from behind the RV. So we were kicking them up onto our own vehicle. So kind of suck, but you know, it was one of those things that you have the experience and you, now we know that you need some kind of protection and we probably should have learned that beforehand or we should have researched that a little bit more beforehand, but you know what? We should have listened to other people who had done it before. So, uh, yeah, actually in the, in the, uh, in the description down below, we, uh, we'll link to a product that we should have bought, uh, to save the front end of the car. So. Paris is doing a very good job at supervising. Okay. So basically there's just been three screws that we, uh, that just kind of come loose. Middle one and the right one pretty much come out pretty easy. One right there, one right there. This one doesn't come out all the way. My ratchet hits the front part of the car, but it doesn't look like it needs to come all the way out. So, moment of truth. Hang on. Dramatic sip of beer. <laughs> Dramatic sip of beer. Okay. This is the moment of truth of if he can get it out. Yeah, it's kind of a tight fit. While he's doing that, I'm just going to show you guys the front end of the car. It's a... Uh, oh! Fire is back up. Alright, well, Fire just wanted to say hi and give me a kiss. Anyway, so this is the license plate and you can see all of the rock chips in the front of the car and everything. That's what I'm talking about from the Alcan Highway. That is all of the rock chips and everything. So that's pretty much inevitable when you have um, a tow car that is um, doing nothing but being dragged behind an RV, especially down gravel roads and things like that. Okay. It's like you got it out. We got it out. Honestly, not as bad as I was expecting. So that's fun. Yeah, there's definitely some gravel in there. A little bit on the ends. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's a winner. I bet we'll get another 100 horsepower out of this thing, probably. So, at any rate, here's our filter. All right. <laughs> Honestly, kind of surprised uh, it wasn't worse than that. Yeah, me too. That was uh, not as filthy as I was expecting it to be after no. the adventure it's been on the last however many miles. 15,000 miles. Now, we're about to learn a lesson, Stephanie. Uh oh. You bought so, the wrong filter. So, Amazon does not do a very good job at, womp, fil womp. at filter sizes. So, we need a different filter because I don't think that one's going to work very good. Nope. Okay, don't trust Amazon's uh, car selector thing. So, okay, well, that's that. Uh, Hmm. Great how to there. I guess we don't order it off of Amazon. I guess we'll go up to O'Reilly's or something, huh? That's probably a good idea. Just bring yeah. the other one. Let's see if we can Okay, perfect. So we'll do that. So we are going to go to O'Reilly's apparently and uh, we will resume this uh, when we get back. So. We're back! <laughs> We now have our filter that uh, is actually the same size. So 
Wix filter 49048. Put it in the comments below if anybody is stumbling upon this, looking for a tutorial on air filter changes. So whenever I was putting the air filter uh, back in the car so we could go to O'Reilly's to get the new one, uh, I found a cool tip. So this little air cover just kind of pops off and makes it a tad easier to get to the air filter. And it would make it awesome to be able to clean that piece. So at any rate, In, like so. If you're looking for an actual tutorial, maybe this is the wrong place. <laughs> if, you're, if you're if you're looking for flawless execution, maybe you should go get some advice that's not free on YouTube. <laughs> Okay, now we're in there. Gasket goes towards the engine. And it kind of pops back up in place just like so. Now we grab all of our screws and we tighten back up. So now that this filter change has effectively taken us over 24 hours. To complete. So since this is a real life blog, we're uh, actually going to go get some new tires on the Fiat tomorrow. So we're taking uh, we're taking a trip to uh, to Durango, Colorado, uh, starting what Saturday, and it's. Thursday now, so day after tomorrow, and there's a snowstorm coming through, and our tires are like real bald, and we, uh, last few vehicles that we've sold, uh, we've actually like put new tires on them and then sold them imme immediately after, and so we thought, we're like, oh, it's like some kind of curse, we're like, as soon as, uh, something wrong with this, like, why, why are we pumping this money into, uh, you know, buying new tires? Uh, right before we sell it, but then I got to thinking, I was like, wait a minute, maybe that's why the car sells, is because it's got new tires. So I came up with that yesterday, didn't I, Steph? Yes, yes you did. I don't know if that's the truth necessarily, but that's why the car sells, but you know, whatever, we need new tires, we need new tires. We're taking a long road trip. And if it Single start, without tires. And if it starts snowing on our way to Colorado, I would rather have something with at least a little bit of tread on it. Check those back ones. Those are the good ones. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll cover this back one. Oh, I don't know if I can get that. I think they're actually <laughs> under the legal limit. I think we're being illegal. I think we're criminals. Oh, I don't right know now. if that's gonna focus on it. No. I don't know if y'all can see that real, real well, but those are really bald. I'm not comfortable with that. Especially if we're going to be driving in snow, which I hope we are because that means that when we go skiing, there will be snow. Exactly. And that is the best possible conditions for skiing is snow. And they have been getting hammered recently. Tahoe was supposed to get something forecasted like six feet of snow, like in a matter of like three days. This is really interesting. Yeah, super interesting. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. They got some screws on this thing that are excessively long for their purpose. Okay. Engine compartment is filthy. I used to like to keep a uh, really clean engine bay, but then it's like all this uh, computer stuff kind of makes me nervous to like get it all wet and clean it up. So I don't really know if, if it's better to leave it dirty or to get it wet to clean it. I don't know. Sweet, so air filter has changed.
this cover back on it. And why is that? It just kind of pops down on there. And basically, I'm expecting to have oh somewhere north of 600 horsepower on it now. Um, pretty pretty much outrun any Mustang on the road, um, twin turbo or not. You know, so it's just pretty much good to go. So yeah. It's, I'm expecting to be able to top out at a pretty gnarly, like probably like 83 miles an hour. Um, but you know what, we're not in that big of a hurry, so no need to go any faster anyway. Oh. And there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Super dramatic. <laughs> Way dramatic. Awesome. So that's how you change an air filter. And that's a, <laughs> that's a, this is one of the days that we were talking about that's not all nature and, uh, what would you say? Nature and dramatic landscapes. Not and all adventure. Not all adventure. It's adventure. Every day is an adventure. adventure. But. <laughs> so, yeah, so real life stuff. Anyway, uh, tomorrow we are actually going to uh, be packing up to go to Durango. Uh, so tune in for that. And we are going to be doing a video tomorrow on how to pack for a ski, how to pack for a snow ski trip with the caveat of not overpacking. Everybody has such a hard time of overpacking. We're going to teach you how to not do that, but still have all the necessities. So, tune in tomorrow. Bye-bye.